Morning, Zion Church. Morning, YouTube. Morning. To all the men, happy Father's Day. Special day. I know we, don't, we shouldn't need a day to celebrate our fathers. We shouldn't need a day set aside by the government to say, hey, this is a day we have to spend time or, or give dad a phone call or take him out to lunch or do something special for him. Should be most every day. More importantly, we gotta remember God our Father. Most importantly, God our Father, what he represents. If we love the Lord with all our heart, God our Father is our Father. We are his sons and daughters. It's so important we understand that. But we wanna get into the message. The message is important. It's part two of last week. We talked about why Jesus shouldn't have been crucified. When I talk about that, we know he needed to be crucified, but why shouldn't he be crucified? Because they did everything wrong. They did it for all the wrong reasons. There was no blood upon his hands. He was not guilty of any crimes, but yet they did not, meaning the religious leaders did not like what Jesus stood for. So they kept finding things just like people in our lives that don't like us. There's people that don't like you. There's people that don't like me. They're gonna find fault no matter what you do. That's your choice. So anyway, let's talk about it. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, had everything they wanted prior to Christ. What does that mean? They had the best seats in the synagogues. They were honored among men and women. When they walked down the street in their, their flowing robe and, and they had a scepter in their hand, they were like kings and people parted aside for them like Moses parted the Red Sea and he would walk down and they would walk to the side by side. And they would say, hey, that's a Pharisee. That's someone special. They had money. People throw money at their feet thinking, and this is what's wrong with the church right now. People think by throwing money into a collection plate, it's going to give you salvation. All it does is lessen your pocket. It ain't going to give you salvation. But people think back then too, hey, let's put more money into the plate, more gold. Maybe I'll give them some chickens. Maybe I'll do this, so and so forth. And they had money. They had authority. Do you know they had authority? They had authority amongst everyone. Amongst everyone. They were considered royalty in most people's eyes. So they had everything. Long comes Jesus Christ. Jesus being crucified based on the laws. Listen to this. Based on the laws. And the legal system should have never happened. Currently, if, if Jesus was on trial to day. There is no way he would have been crucified. Would have been a bad thing because we know if he wasn't crucified we would not have a direct way to God the Father. So praise God. It had to happen. It was prophesied and it did happen. But what I'm trying to show you and tell you today is why it shouldn't have happened based on how they did it. How they did it. So the Roman leaders and the Jewish leaders both had different kinds of authority. The Jewish leaders, the religious leaders had authority. They, they made men follow their law, so and so forth. But I want you to think about that for a moment. The very leaders of the area of Israel, Jerusalem, and all that, the very religious high on the shelf leaders are the very ones that were waiting for Jesus, for waiting for the Messiah, not Jesus, waiting for the Messiah, waiting for the Savior to come. He never comes. So what do they do? The very ones that waited for him are the ones that are now going to crucify him. It's just messed up. But we first needed someone to be the fall guy. What do I mean by that? They needed someone to be the betrayer. We all know who that is. It's Judas, pretty simple. It was Judas. They knew perhaps they watched the 12 disciples. These guys weren't stupid. They were schooled. They were wise in their own minds. They watched and they took time. They looked like, ah, the weak link, the guy with the purse, the guy with the money bag is probably the weak link of the 12. And what did they do? They kind of get him aside and start talking to him. And they realized He's not really into Jesus. 
He's more into being around him, having a recognition, having the money in his pocket, because he, he would dip into it and buy other things. They got him. They got him. My first scripture is Luke 22, 1 to 6. Open your word, Luke 22, 1 to 6. This is going to be easy to go through the word today, because we're all going to be kind of in the, the first chapters of the of the. New Testament. 22, 1 to 6. And the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, and they called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought that they might kill him. They already want to kill him, all right? They already have that much hatred and anger and jealousy in their hearts. They already know that it's done. And they feared the people. Then, then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and in commune with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Listen to this. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude. There's so much information on six verses. We could just do a message on that. The religious leaders find their man. They find their man, Judas. Now here's the important thing we can understand. People say, well, he was prophesied. It was a man was prophesied that he would betray Jesus Christ. But, but Judas still had free will. God still gave him free will to make that choice. He chose poorly. He chose poorly. Poorly. He loved money and power above Jesus Christ. A lot of people, these leaders, a lot of people in the current day, modern church area still love power and authority and money above the Lord. They may present themselves as they love the Lord, but they are a wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen? Amen. Let's move down a little bit. Luke 22, 45 to 48. I told you it's going to be easy to follow. 45 to 48. And when he rose up from prayer and come to his disciples, he found them sleeping in for sorrow. And they said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he sp spoke beyond the multitude, and then he has called Judas, one of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. So important you understand this. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayeth thou son of man with a kiss. Judas betrayeth the son of man with a kiss. Why is that so important? Because a kiss signifies love. A kiss, a kiss signifies you trust, you believe, you care for that person. It was the ultimate betrayal. A kiss. He could have said, there he is. Or went over Behind him, here he is. He goes up and kisses him. The ultimate betrayal. Breaks my heart. Listen to this. The kiss, which is the badge of affection. Badge of affection. Was a tool used to separate the others from Jesus to set him up for his death. Oh, man, that's crazy stuff. They arrest him. They have no just cause. My son could tell you this, law enforcement. You have to have just cause before you can't just go to someone's store and say, I'm arresting you because I think in the future you're going to do something wrong. You have to have just cause. They had no just cause. But they knew that his ministry was continuing to grow and are like, we got to do something. I don't like the way this guy makes me feel. Makes me feel, ugh, because they didn't love him. They didn't love him. So before the illegal proceedings, they come to find him. What did they find him with? They had torches, swords, and clubs. Why? I don't know. What did they think that there was going to be revolt? Not sure. But it wasn't necessary. They were, like, as they were going to capture a hostile criminal. Jesus asked them, whom do you seek? Now listen to this. This is important too. They don't say Jesus Christ. They say Jesus of Nazareth. Why do they say Jesus of Nazareth? Because they do not believe that he is the Christ. 
the anointed one. They don't believe he's the Messiah, so they just reckon hey, it's, it's the, the carpenter's stepson, that goofy guy that makes furniture, Jesus from Nazareth. They don't give him the respect. They don't give him the love he deserves. That's so important we understand that. Going over to Matthew 26, 49 to 54. Matthew 26, 49 to 50, 54. 26, 49 to 54. And forthwith he came to Jesus, and he said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they, laid hands on Jesus, and took him. And behold, one of them, listen to this, this is good stuff. One of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck the servant of the high priest's ear and smote it off, cut his ear clear off. Because, you know, they kept their, their swords very sharp. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again the sword into his place. For all they had take of the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinketh that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? Here's what's the most important part. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Now here's where I struggle with this whole message. I'm coming to arrest this guy that the Jewish Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes put in my head and I'm, I'm angry. I can't wait to get him. I got my club, I got my torch. Man, I'm gonna lay a whooping on him. So I'm, I'm, I'm all pumped up and they're, they're leading me. They got me all pumped up and I go out there and all of a sudden, one of his 12 takes their sword out, which surprised they had swords, but they had them. Cuts the ear off. And I see this man that they complained to Jesus of Nazareth and all he could do is make stuff out of wood. He couldn't save souls. He didn't have the ability to be the savior, but yet he touches the man's ear and is restored. I struggle the fact that at that point, that very miracle, they could not believe upon him, but they did it because their hearts were so hardened. Like many people's hearts right now in our world are so hardened that they can't believe because they can't see. Just as Paul couldn't see, that's why the scales had to come from his eyes. But I want you to remember that the last verse, what it said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? But I want you to remember that the last verse of scriptures, it must be fulfilled. Jesus could have easily walked away. Do you understand that? Everyone understands that. He could have said, you know what? Today's not my day. And legions of angels would have came, and it would, it would have been it. It would have been done. Now, here's the interesting thing. You know why they waited until he was out of the city? Because they were afraid there would be a revolt. They're afraid that the people that truly love Jesus, because people that truly love Jesus will die for him. People that truly love Jesus will truly die for him because they know that he died. He will die for them or die for them now. But... They were afraid that there would be rules. So the cowards decide, let's, let's wait till he's out of the way there, you know, and it'll be easier. We'll get some guys with some clubs and torches and we'll capture him. It's real simple. It's real simple. But listen to this. The judge was not impartial. What does that mean? That means he already had his verdict in his heart. He wasn't going to say, you know what, a, a, a fair trial. We're going to give him a fair trial. The judge was appointed to protect the accused until proven guilty. Isn't that our justice system right now? Even though it, the, the news media makes people guilty or innocent before it even has a trial, that's wrong. But when I'm talking, the true justice system is you are innocent until proven guilty. Jesus was innocent but he was proven guilty before anything happened. The judge, the fix was already in, all right? You see that's still happening, in her, not with Jesus, but with, with the fix is already in certain people. The fix was in, the Jewish leaders had him guilty before he spoke one word. Back to Matthew 26, 59 to 68. Listen to this, it's a long one. Matthew 26, 59 to 68. This, is, this ties it all together. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false 
witness. It doesn't say found, sought witnesses. Sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Ye though many false witnesses came, yet found none. At the last two came two false witnesses. And they said, this fellow, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said to him, answer thou nothing. What is this which these witnesses against thee? And Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent or tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we need of witnesses? Behold, how you have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? He answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then he spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with their palms of their hands, saying, Prophesize unto us, thou Christ, who is that that smote or hit you? The Pharisees drummed up false witnesses. You see a lot of trials now, people. They're, they're, they're paid or they're, they're, they're an old acquaintance or the judge knew or, you know, the person has a lot of, you see it all the time. It's disgusting, but they, well, listen to this. I always tell people, the scales of justice will always be in balance under God Almighty. The Pharisees drummed up false accusations against Jesus. They wanted his ministry over. They wanted him out of their life. They wanted to be able to go down the streets again, flooring robes. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And, you know, the money's falling at their feet and the people are falling at their feet because now they are the God again. Jesus Christ was in their way. They're going to do whatever they can to get him out of the way. They look kind of low to find men and come forward and make accusations against Jesus. They could only come up with two. They're talking about the temple being rebuilt in three days. He's talking about the temple of himself. They thought he was talking about the temple built by man's hands. So that's why they said it was blasphemy. He couldn't understand it. The coward, you know, as we talked already about the leaders, they, they didn't want to take him in amongst other people for fear of a revolt. Listen to this. They took him to Annas, which was a high priest. The high priest, but Cephas who was elected or chosen by the Roman government. So the fix is in Rome and the religious leaders already got a deal going. I don't mean about Jesus, I mean about life. They go to Rome and they kind of work back and forth. And just like in most politics, there's a bunch of baloney going on, all right? A lot of false things going on. Anyway. The Roman governor accepted him, so the fix was in. Jesus was presented before the Sanhedrin, which is, I'm going to explain this to you. That was made up, compromised of 71 religious leaders, Pharisees, scribes, 71 of them, high priests. That would be considered to like our grand jury or, every, or our Supreme Court, I'm sorry, our Supreme Court. So he goes to them. They bring him to them. To hear his case. To hear his case. All right. So prior to Jesus being before Roman leaders, he goes to, from Annas, he goes to Cephas, then he is in front of the, the Sanhedrin, and then he goes over to Pilate. They already have their religious, they already have their conviction. They already... Claim, making claims that he broke laws, that he's blasphemy, that he's against God, so on and so forth. So they already have their case already in their head. The problem was they wanted to take him so fast they didn't plan everything. They weren't prepared as they should have been. Their case wasn't rock solid, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Anyway, so prior to Jesus being before the Roman leaders, Pilate Herod, Jesus was accused and found guilty of the crime. Yet there was no crime he committed. How's that possible? Because their hearts were so wicked and hard, they made it possible. All right. 
claiming to be the son of God, destroying and rebuild the temple in three days. So the fact they did not believe in Christ, they conspired to kill him. Wow. Luke 22, 66 to 70. Luke 22, 66 to 70. Let me read if I may. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people, the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council saying, art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, if I tell you, you will not believe. They, they were believing no matter what. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the son sit on the right hand of the power of God. Listen to this. Then said they all, art thou the son of God? And he said unto them, ye say that I am. Ye say that I am. Now this is so cool. Jesus didn't come out and say it. He used their own words against them. They were saying it. He was saying, you're saying I am. He, he was smarter than them. Obviously, he was the son of God. But they thought they were slick. This is so interesting. Jesus claimed to be Messiah and would not believe upon him. Now, this is even more important. If he claimed to be the Messiah under Roman law, it was penalty of treason. Wow. Wow. Because they knew he would be powerful. And Rome didn't want anything to do with people that were coming to power because Rome was large and in charge. Jesus tried to spell it out for the leaders that he was the anointed one, but they couldn't hear him. It was this. It was this. It was all closed out to him. It didn't matter. Today, many follow the Jewish tradition and still are waiting upon the Messiah. Listen to this. They fail to believe in Jesus Christ, whether it be Jew, whether it be Greek, or whether it be Gentile, which is everyone else. We'll never get to know him as their savior. You know when they will get to know him? On the great white throne, they will get to know him and he will say, you are cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Too late, too sad, breaks my heart, but it is what it is. People, just back then, they had the very Son of God before them, the Messiah they prayed about, the Messiah they, they waited for, the Messiah they read about, and yet he's right before their very eyes, and their hearts became so hardened, just like people right now in current day, their hearts are so hardened. They can see miracles, they can see things. They had a child born in front of them. It's a miracle. But yet, they are so blind and hearted, they can't see Jesus Christ. Man, it's wicked. All right. Tone it down. It's Father's Day. Not. Matthew 26, 62. And the high priest arose and said to them, Answer thou nothing. What is which this witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. I love it. And the high priest answered and said, I am a joy thee, the living God. Thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Just re-support what I just talked. We already talked about the scripture, but and he's telling them, listen to this. The trial was illegal. No formal charges against him. So it's illegal. You can't have a trial if there's no formal charges. You can't, if someone knocks on your door and they claim to be the state police and say, Hey, I'm coming to get you. You did nothing. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. Now, if they come and say, hey, you were caught doing this, and we know you did this, and we have this and this, well, now you might want to open the door. But only false accusations, but no truth or violations of any law. All trials, listen to this, had to be during the day. This happened at night. It's wrong. It was illegal. It was illegal. The very men, the very religious leaders that people followed were breaking all the laws. They should have been on trial. Not Jesus Christ. John 18, 12 and 14. John 18, 12 and 14. Then the band of captains and officers of Jews took Jesus and bound him. And led him away to Annas first, and then to fire his father-in-law, Cephas, which was the high priest that same year. Now, Cephas, 
was he gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man, listen to this, should die for the people. The first part of the trial was the preliminary examination. What does that mean? They had proceedings before the high priest. This was unproductive meeting because Cephas, Aeneas, son-in-law, was actually the high priest of the year. He finally gives them over to him. He can't find nothing wrong with him. Jesus, no. He, he's above all their knowledge. Verdicts could not be rendered the same day. Listen to this. You couldn't do a trial. First, you had to do it during the day. You couldn't do it at night. And you couldn't give the verdict that same day. Day. He had to wait at least one day. They did everything so immoral, so wrong, and so illegal. But they wanted their man out of the way. Lo and behold, praise God that they, they were tools of Satan, so to speak. The verdict had been given, legally given the next day. It had to be. Amazing how some trials in our crazy world Take months, even years. Blows my mind. I just see all this money being wasted. Well, we got one more month of this and that. Like, seriously? Really? Wow. It's crazy. But that's just the way it is. You have a high-power lawyer, you get away with things. Or, or, you know, a judge or whatever. They hated Jesus so much, they drummed up false witnesses, fake charges, and blindfold and spit in his face. Do you know that they said they, they hit him with the palm? Palm. Palm. They kept doing it. Do you know that his face was unrecognizable by his own mother? They beat him that bad. It wasn't just a little slap aside and the fingers were still there. They beat him so bad. He couldn't be recognized anymore. That's how much they hated him. Because their hearts were full of everything but Christ. So much, so much. The Jews sent Jesus to Pilate. The conviction for the crucifixion. I love this. Pilate sends him to Herod. Do you see what's going on here? Pass the buck. Well, we can't do it. Let's pass it on to Pilate. We can't do it. Let's pass it on to Herod. What does Herod do? Passes it back to Pilate. Passes it back. Passes it back to Pilate. Let's go to Mark 15, 1 to 5. Mark 15, 1 to 5. Mark 15, 1 to 5 says, And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Now here it is. Listen to this. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered, said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answer thou nothing. Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing. So Pilate marveled. Why did he marvel? Because they are accusing him of crimes worthy of death. And his lips are sealed. As it says, he would be silent as the lamb led to the slaughter. Pilate was the Roman, listen to this, a little more history. Pilate was the Roman governor of Palestine. He came to Jerusalem during the Passover. You know why? It wasn't because he was going to get caught up in a Passover. It's because he wanted to make sure there was law and order at all times. I'm not letting these people get out of hand, these, these so-called Christians or Jewish leaders. We're going to keep a, a tight lid on them. And if we have to bring legions of armies in to keep force, we'll do that. No one's going to be doing things on my watch. That's Pilate's mentality. Pilate wanted nothing to do with Jesus because his wife was stricken with nightmares. You ever have nightmares? Luke 23, 4 to 12. Luke 23, 4 to 12 says, Then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. He didn't say, He's guilty of the charges you drummed up or your, your two phony witnesses that you paid off. I find no fault in this man. And there are more fear saying and stirring up the people, teaching throughout the jewelry, being a galley in the place. 
And when Pilate heard Galilee, listen to this, he asked whether the man was Galilean. And as soon as he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod and himself in Jerusalem at that time. And Herod saw Jesus. I love this. Listen to this. This is cool. He was exceedingly glad. I'm like, oh, cool. He's going to come to Christ. For he was desirous to see him of a long season because he heard many things of him and he hoped that he would have some miracles done by him. What a sham. Then he questioned him many words, but he answered him nothing. The chief priest and scribes stood vehemently accused him. And Herod and his men of war set at night and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before they were enemies between themselves. Herod wanted to meet Jesus, not because he realized that his life was empty and he needed something more. He needed to give his life to Christ to know that the day he breathes his last, he will be in the presence of Jesus Christ. He wanted to see him perform a little show. How about a miracle? Maybe he could do this. Maybe, you know, he could take my gold I have and multiply it. What, you know, it's just amazing how people are. Anyway, Herod couldn't get Jesus to give him enough information to convict him. And no laws were broken. He sends him back to Pilate. And as, as the word says, the funny thing is two men that hated each other, Pilate and Herod, became friends. Because they both had a common bond in trying to put Jesus Christ to death. Wow. Talk about a good friendship. Sign me up. Matthew 27, 11 and 22 says, let's do this. And Jesus stood before the governor. The governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate unto him, Hearest thou many things they witness against thee? And he answered and never a word, as so much the governor marveled again. Now the feast of the governor, and this is just how God works things so beautifully. And the feast of the governor was to release the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore they had gathered together. Pilate said unto them, whom will you release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? Now there they said called Christ. They didn't recognize him as Christ. They said he calls himself Christ. For he knew that the envy they had delivered him. When he sat down in the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, here it is, saying, have nothing to do with, with this just man, for I have suffered many things in a day and a dream because of him. But if the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Do you see how wicked and hard the religious leaders' hearts are? And the governor answered and said unto him, whether of twain will you that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they said unto him, Let him be crucified. Jesus was chosen to be put to death over, listen to this, over a wicked criminal, Barabbas. Why? Because Barabbas was a, you know, not sure what his whole crime was. You know, a thief, most of them were thieves back then. If he was a murderer, he would put to death. But he was wicked. But the religious people knew that if they could persuade, it's like a lot of religious people right now, persuade people to follow their religion and not Christ. If they could persuade them and think, you know what, this guy is no good. Let's, let's tell them we want Barabbas released. Sad part is Barabbas probably got released and probably raped one of their daughters or stole from one of their houses. The sad part. So if the trial would take place in current time, Jesus would have never been convicted. But we must know the fact that without conviction, we would not have the pathway to God the Father. Do you see how everything was put perfectly together? Pilate was a whip. He was a whip. Yes, he was a governor, but he was a whip. He could not make the decision to convict Jesus. Then along comes his wife. Please have nothing to do with this just man because I had wicked nightmares about him. 
So what does he do? He puts it back on the religious leaders. You guys decide. My hands are clean. No blood will be upon my hands. Puts it back on them. What do they do? They make the wrong choice again. But the right choice for each and every one that believes and confesses Jesus Christ as their Savior. Amen and amen. Listen to this. His death was illegal. His death was immoral. His death was wicked by man. But his death was necessary out of obedience to God the Father. This is, you're going to get the gospel in one minute. So listen. Don't tune out. You're already looking somewhere else. Listen, this is important. <laughs> his death was illegal. His death was immoral. His death was wicked by man. But his death is necessary to beat us to God the Father. His death provided life. His death provided all that confess and believe upon him, Jesus Christ. That they have justification for God the Father. His blood redeemed us. His blood that bled upon the cross redeemed us. We were redeemed. We were cast in our debt paid in full once and for all because these illegal proceedings put him upon the cross. But because he was on the cross, we got the way to the Father. We can now have salvation if we believe and confess in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Amen and amen and amen. Jesus' trial was a sham. His accusers, so full of wickedness, they got what they wanted. His death. His death. They never believed upon him. And I'm going to tell you what. They're in a crisis eternity right now. And I'll tell you what. I'm sure they wish everything was different. Today, whom or what? It's the question for you all. We're done. Whom or what do you believe upon? Your family, your religion, your friends, your political leaders. I always laugh when I say it. I can't help it. It just happens. Or Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Listen to these scriptures, and I'm going to close it up. Listen to this. Why was Jesus illegally, well, illegally crucified? Listen to this. You all know it, John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He didn't have to give him. He gave him out of love. That whoever, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Saved. Romans 6, 23. This is so beautiful. For the wage of sin is death. It is. Prior to my giving my life to Christ, I was, I was on the path straight to Hades. I was riding her fast, trust me. But the gift, gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift, free gift. John 3, 3, Jesus answered, said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Simple. People that follow religion, those Pharisees that believe, they never see the kingdom of God because they believe here that they were smarter and sharper. And there's people still thinking that. You will not see the kingdom of God if you do not believe upon him. John 3, 36. He that believeth in the Son has everlasting life. There it is again. And he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life. The wrath of God abideth on him. Lastly, you all know it. Romans 10, 9, 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, this is the most important part, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let's close in prayer. Dear grace and love of Father, we just, we just love you. We thank you how you put it all together. Yes, these proceedings were all immoral, illegal, corrupt. You name it. They were all wrong. But you had the pieces all perfectly in place. And these men all had free will to choose whom they would believe upon. Whom they would believe upon the religious leaders. Or whom they would believe upon you, Jesus Christ. And the world still has that choice. 
whom to believe upon, our leaders, our religion, or Jesus Christ. And there's only one choice, and that is Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you. In your most precious name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.